Yes, I know, another power supply conversion video. But wait, look at it. It's gorgeous. And it's very useful if you only need the common outputs for your electronic projects. Like the 3.3, 5, 12 volts and the USB port. Hello guys, my name is Sorin and today I'm gonna show you how to transform this ATX power supply into this lab bench power supply. This is my old power supply, I've been using it for a few years. That's a simple switch between the three outputs and a little panel voltmeter which shows me the selected voltage. But it's not good enough for my future electronic projects. I'll make a better one from this PC power supply. First of all we need to test it. To power it up we just connect the green wire to any of the black wires. On my camera the green wire looks more like a blue wire but I will refer to it as the green wire. We need a panel voltmeter and ammeter, a rotary switch, a double rocker switch, a dummy load resistor, one LED with current limiting resistor, binding posts, an USB port and a lot of shrinking tubes. Before you dismantle a power supply, keep in mind that it's very dangerous. Don't try this if you're not sure what you're doing. You need to wait a few minutes after you disconnect the power supply from the AC power. Those big capacitors can hold a lot of energy and they can hurt you. So they need to be discharged before you start working on it. After I've opened the power supply and disconnect the fan, I notice there is a lot of dust inside it. I'll take it outside to give it a proper clean. After I've cut the wires to a shorter length, let's decide what wires I'm going to use. Orange is 3.3 volts, we need to connect it with the 3.3 volts sense wire to keep the voltage stable. On most power supplies the sense wire is brown, but on my power supply it's the same color as the 3.3 volts rail. That's not a problem, just don't forget about it. Yellow is positive 12 volts, this power supply has two positive 12 volts outputs, but I'm going to use only one of them. My panel ammeter goes up to maximum 10 amps, but I don't think I need more than that for my electronic projects. Black is ground, obviously. Red is positive 5 volts. Purple is positive 5 volts standby. This wire will always provide 5 volts if the power supply is connected to the EC power, even when it's turned off. That's why on your computers you can charge your phone from the USB port even if the PC is turned off. Grey is power good connection, this is used by the motherboard, we're not going to use it. Blue is negative 12 volts, for me is not useful because it has only 300 milliamps. And finally the green wire to turn on the power supply. I need to fit all the parts on one side. The rocker switch will be mounted too close to this AC circuit board. I will unsolder it from the AC connector and solder it back a few millimeters lower. I've made this simple schematic on the side of the case to know where I need to cut it. When drilling holes in a metal sheet, first drill a smaller hole, then enlarge it with a bigger drill bit. For the wattmeter rectangular hole, I try to drill a lot of smaller holes, then cut the remaining metal with a metal cutting scissors. But this takes too much time. The correct way to do this is to use an electric jigsaw with a good quality blade. I mark the holes to keep the drill bit stable, let the cat pass, then I drill two holes for the jigsaw blade. You need to clean the edges of the holes because you don't want to cut your fingers in them. Just use a bigger drill bit. For the rectangular holes you can use a small metal file. It looks good so far. This power supply doesn't have enough switch. To give it one I need to cut one of the two AC input wires. On the rocker switch I'll bend the connectors I don't need and I'll cut the excess plastic. Prepare some wires and solder them to the red off switch. 
then isolate them with shrinking tubes. For the LED I originally used a 100 ohms resistor, but it was shining too bright so I changed it later with a 470 ohm resistor. Don't forget to use shrinking tubes on all the exposed wires and soldering. I'll connect the LED and the USB port to the 5 volt standby, so I can use the USB port even if the power supply is turned off. To keep the voltage stable we need to use a resistor as a dummy load. I'll use a 10 watt and 43 ohms resistor. I don't want to use a lower value resistor because it will get too hot. It will be connected to the 5 volt rail because this output delivers most of the current. I've already tested for about 10 minutes and it's warming up just a bit. I'll use two part adhesive to glue it on the interior side of the case so the metal will act as a cooler. For the positive 3.3 volts binding post, I'll use this U-shaped connector because there isn't much room in that corner. I'll cut three orange wires and solder them together with the sense wire to the connector. The rotary switch will be used to toggle between the output voltages. It can monitor one output voltage at a time. I'll solder four wires to it. Orange, red, yellow and purple. The voltmeter will be powered by a 5 volt wire and its yellow sensor wire will be soldered to the central connector of the switch. To easily make the ground connections, I'll cut 4 black wires and solder them to a 2.5 mm wire. Shrinking tube I'll prepare 3 red wires and 3 yellow wires for the other outputs. We can cut the excess plastic from the voltmeter. We keep one black wire for the green switch and cut all the other wires that we don't need. Next, the binding posts. The black binding posts are too close to the circuit board and wires. I need to shorten them like this. I'll prepare a 2.5 mm black wire to connect the three ground binding posts. Shrinking tubes cannot be inserted here. The binding post will be insulated with electrical tape. I'll use a shrinking tube at the end to prevent the tape from peeling off. The positive 3.3 volts binding post needs to be shortened as well. I'll use hot glue for the LED and USB port. After that, I'll solder their ground wires to the thick black one. And now we connect everything, hopefully they'll all fit together. Solder the green wire and the black wire to the green switch. Now solder the red switch wires to the AC input. For the ammeter I prefer to solder the wires instead of using the connector because I don't want to lose any power from an imperfect connection. The ground wire will go through the ammeter so it will measure the total amount of current used from all the outputs. The wattmeter and rocker switch are a bit loose, so I'll stick them to the panel with hot glue. Don't forget to connect the fan. With a little muscle force the case can be screwed back on. This is a good sign, it's still turning on. The 
The 5 volt standby USB is working, but it's producing only 20 milliamps, even though on the power supply case it's saying 2.5 amps. In the future I will probably connect a red 5 volt wire to the USB port and use it only for my electronic measurements, not to charge my phone. We need a knob for the rotary switch. At first I wanted to use this black one, but later on I will replace it with a smaller knob. The power supply needs 4 self-adhesive rubber pads. Apart from the side hole, the power supply is finished, just don't stick your finger in there. We also need some heavy duty power supply leads. I'll make them from two banana plugs, the crocodile pliers left over from my voltmeter project and 2.5mm wires. I think it looks better with this switch knob. And now let's test it. This is a Peltier module which I'm testing for a future project. I've placed it between two radiators. When it's connected to a power source, it lowers the temperature on one side and rises the temperature on the other side, but it's using a lot of current. At 12 volts it's using more than 4 amps. I like these binding posts because you can connect even bare wires to them. If you enjoyed this tutorial, click the like button and also subscribe to my channel.